How's it going, everybody? In this video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at our next topic on the Palo Alto series, which is going to be understanding the web GUI. So as you deal with more and more of these GUI-based firewalls and appliances, it's, it's going to be really, really important for you to understand the basics to what's happening with them. So what I want to basically do is walk you through some of the the, the tabs that are in the firewall so you, that you can understand what they are and how they work and things like that. So as we start diving into this, obviously we have our dashboard. Let me go ahead and jump out of the way so you guys can see this better. Let me go full screen. So and I'll zoom in a little bit so it's easier for you guys to see. So the dashboard itself is actually pretty intuitive. It gives you a lot of the information you need to know about a particular device and things like that. So you have the device name, management IP, that type of stuff. You have a MAC address, the, the model. If this was a registered box, you would have a serial number there. I'll take all that good stuff. And then if there's any licensing that's involved here, this is where this would be sitting. Management CPU is down pretty low, so is data plane CPU. And then the session count is pretty low. You can actually do quite a bit with the sessions. Uh, 1,250 total sessions possible. System system logs of what happened and stuff like that. We can see that at some point in the past there were some different loads of different daemons that were working, basically different processes and things like that. And then we made a connection successfully out to the Palo Alto network server, which is why I gave it a default gateway and a DNS entry. So that's basically what we accomplished there. So if we move to our right, we have the ACC, which is your basically your application control center. So if you wanted to see what's going on in the network, this is where this would go. Um, in my experience, there's little to no data that's propagated to this, uh, this uh, tab because of the fact that we're not licensed for it. So a lot of capabilities won't work because licensing is missing. So um, I don't really worry about that too much. Obviously, there's a lot of different activity that will be processed and things like that if you had a, the appropriate licensing, but because we don't, it is what it is. Then we go over to the monitor tab. Now there's a bunch of different ways that you can monitor stuff, obviously. So we have traffic, this would be just normal traffic going through the firewall. No, this won't work, none of the, the bulk of these will not work because licensing. Now we come down here to session browser as we set up NAT and get PCs to talk through the network and things like that and get VPN sessions to work, you'll start to see some of this, this data start to pop up and things like that. If we come over to the policies tab, on the, uh, you'll have a bunch of different policies. Right now, uh, I've wiped the box, so it's a brand new deployment. None of the policies that I had deployed previous to this are here. I don't have any NAT entries deployed, means there shouldn't be any, um, and stuff like that. Any of these other advanced capabilities aren't here. For example, SD-WAN, it is an option, but it says right here that uh, license required for SD-WAN function to work. We continue moving to our right, we have our objects tab where we can create a bunch of different objects. So as you can see, you have global protect, you've got custom objects, security profiles, decryption, SD-WAN, link management, stuff like that. We're not gonna spend very much time here at all because when I was testing things like the app ID and content ID and trying to do your, uh, and the profiles down here, this is where you would do a lot of your advanced capabilities to try and do URL filtering and antivirus and spyware and things like that. None of it worked because there was no license. So no license, it's like uh, no money, no, no, no uh, who, how does it go? No woman, no cry, uh, Bob Marley. So don't, um, uh, if you get licensed, great. If you are not, well, then take it for what it is. It says license, or it actually does tell you like antivirus, threat, pre uh, threat prevention license required for all these to work, anti-spyware, license required, vulnerability protection, license required, URL filtering, license required, um, file blocking. I believe this will work to a degree, but um, wildfire will not, won't work because there's no license for that, data filtering, stuff like that. SD-WAN, SD-WAN will require the license to work. So the bulk of these features won't work, so I don't mess with them. The cool thing about the security profile is once you've created a profile, 
then you can map that to a security policy. And then you can, in the profile, you always permit the traffic and then you block in the security policy. But we'll talk about that more when we get to security policies because the way we're gonna go and work it is we're gonna talk about, uh, once we get finished with this detail, we're gonna hit zones, virtual routers, interfaces, security policies, NAT, DMZ access, things like that. We'll get the internet up and running, DMZ access into the environment, and then we'll take a look at or site to site VPN and things like that. Um, there's not gonna, actually not gonna be a ton of stuff we're gonna talk about. This will actually be a rather short course because of the fact that licensing, I know you're probably getting tired of hearing me talk about it, but I wanna be clear. Then we have the network tab. We're gonna be spending quite a bit of time here. This is where, where we're gonna spend the bulk of our time. All because of the fact that we don't have licensing. So um, you have zones, interfaces, VLANs, virtual wires, virtual routers, IP6 tunnels, GRE, DHCP. We'll be configuring a bunch of this stuff here. And then you get to the device tab over here. Anything that's going on, this is where this will be taking place. If you want to find out wh how something is working or anything like that, this is where you would go to do that type of stuff. If you want to do certificate management, there's an option for that. Server profiles for doing a bunch of different things. And then you have, for example, if you wanted to do SSL VPN, we can go through the steps to configure it. And if you want to create local users versus to have, instead of having the firewall go off box to Active Directory or something like that, you can create a local user database, create some users and go about it that way. Other than that, that is pretty much it for the the walkthrough on that. Then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you guys how to create a new administrator. So um, that's actually a big deal because a lot of companies that I've worked with don't like to use a on-box administrator account. So the way you would do this is click on administrators. Right now there is no administrators other than admin, which is the role of super user. I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to click up here. I'm going to type in, I'll just say R Riker. The authentication profile, none is defined, but we could create one if we wanted to. I'm going to just give it a password of capital P at sign SSW0RD, capital P at sign SSW0RD. And I'm gonna say it is a super user, the administrator type is dynamic, and we're gonna click on okay. That'll be there. So, um, one of the other things that I want to go do is talk to you guys briefly about how wh what is required in order for you to get things working. So for example, if we come over here to network and we click on zones, right? No zones are created. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on add. And you see how it's this one here is colored to a degree where it's kind of like this orangey, this yellowish color. Uh, if you come in here and just type in some value, right? Say we say type in test. Uh, that's going to be something that you would want to populate. Wherever there is a color of yellow or whatever this color is, you need to populate that field. Same thing with interfaces. If you come over here to the interfaces and let's say we come in and we click on one slash two, hypothetically speaking. We come in here and we change this to be a layer three interface and then we come over here to IPv4 and we type something and notice how this guy here is yellow. Notice the red around the box. That means it needs to be configured. Okay, if you see that or you notice, you see this little squiggly line underneath IPv4? It needs to be configured. So yellow indicates a field that needs to be populated and red um, red line with red jagged line indicates a area that needs to be a tab that needs to be clicked on in order to be worked on. But if you notice, uh, SD, none of these other ones really work. So if I go to layer two, for example, you'll notice that that specific one, that IPv4 tab goes away. If I go back to layer three, you'll notice that IPv4 comes back and we have to go configure something. So if I click off of this and uncheck the box, you notice that if I click on cancel, let's go to one slash one. Let's go to layer three, click on it. Notice now it's not showing you anything. Virtual router, you're gonna wanna choose a virtual router. We'll talk about those in a bit later. 
uh, you're going to want to set a security zone. There's none configured, so you want to create one. You come over to IPv4, notice how it doesn't give you any information, right? But you need to populate these fields in order for it to actually work. So if I was clicking here, now it goes, oh, well, now that you clicked inside of here, you can go ahead and do that and delete it and it goes away. But you're definitely going to want to pay attention to that as you're going forward. So initially you're like, well, none of that was there, Rob. It's there, you just haven't clicked on it yet. So add, the add button is going to be your best friend and that's basically what you're going to be using to get everything operational. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be our introduction to the web GUI for the Palo Alto firewall. There's really not a whole lot there to it. Now, this is not like FTD, if you guys are familiar with Cisco's next generation firewall, where uh, this would be the firepower device manager for the FTD box, firepower threat defense, and it works much in the same way, right? You have a commit option, you have to commit the config, all that type of stuff, all well and great. We'll cover FTD in a separate set of videos, same thing with SD-WAN, so, but that's basically where we're at. So if you have any questions, leave a comment in the section Leave a comment in the comment section below. Until next time, guys, thanks so much for stopping by, and we'll catch you guys in the next video. So I made kind of a blunder in the last video where I forgot to actually demo the new account. So I'm going to go ahead and, because uh, you can get rid of the admin account if you don't want to keep it, which, which is cool because there's a lot of things that are here by default that you may not want to keep. So guess what? We can get rid of them. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna click over here down in the lower left hand corner, click on log out. And now it gives me this. So I'm gonna come up here and type in our Riker and then the password. That's going to, I'm gonna click save. So I won't have to type that in ever, ever again. So that's gonna take a couple seconds for it to log in. And then once it does, we'll go to device administrators and then we're gonna go to, go ahead and close this guy out real quick and device administrators, I'm gonna click on the admin box because you can't delete an account you're already logged in with, so just keep that in mind. I'm gonna go ahead and delete. It says, do you really wanna delete that? Yes, we do. I'm gonna click on yes. Now, we have to commit the config or else we will have a problem. So we're, we're there with that. So that's basically where that'll come into play. Once you do that, we're logged in as our Riker now, so we'll just have to remember to log in as such. But once it's done committing the config, we'll be in good shape. And then we'll only have one account here. And as we do things down the road, we'll have to obviously play around with those capabilities as we're going. So um, we'll take a look at those details as we get there. So we're almost done with the commit. Any issues that come up here, like warnings and things like that, will pop up right here. Just keep those things in mind as you're moving forward. If you see something pop up and you're like, hmm, that looks a little weird. Now we only have our Riker as our super user, our admin, and we're in good shape. So for, for real this time. Thanks for stopping by, guys, and we'll catch you guys in the next video.